All right, good evening, everyone. So we're going to get started now. Thank you for joining us. We're going to begin our meeting with a brief introduction from Rachel Benson, Rentham's planning director. So I'll pass it over to you, Rachel. Hi, Josh. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody uh, who has made the journey to your computers for tonight's uh, meeting. It's greatly appreciated. Um, this has been a two year process that has ha had about 10% of the population survey responses, which is a great, a huge percentage um, and lots of hard work and focus group meetings with residents and all um, groups within the town. So it's been a great working with everybody. Um, and yeah, this is our final um, public forum. So my name is Rachel Benson, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Um, we've had a really great group of people um, throughout this, um, the steering committee. Um, I won't read through all of them, but every one of them has brought a really great perspective and a really great um, conversation and deliberation to all of these goals and strategies. They've been well thought out and the very thoughtful on every recommendation that they've made and all the strategies. Um, so without further ado, that was a very quick introduction and steering. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Josh, who is the, with MAPC and the project, uh, project manager on this, um, this past two years project. So take it away, Josh. Great, thank you, Rachel. And welcome to you all. And thank you for joining us this evening. As Rachel mentioned, my name is Josh Fiala. I'm a principal planner at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. I'm joined by several of my colleagues this evening who you'll see with a co-host after their names in the participant menu. Um, so tonight, I, I'd like to first reiterate Rachel's thanks to the master plan committee. Uh, it's been great meeting with them throughout this process and their guidance has really been invaluable uh, and helped to direct our work and the draft master plan, which we're presenting to you this evening. So tonight we'll be presenting an overview of the community planning process, which has gotten us to this point, an overview of the master plan content, answer any questions you may have uh, through this presentation or through uh, if you've had a chance to look at any of the other documents or been with us throughout the process. And then we also have a, a few questions to learn more about your priorities for implementation uh, as we conclude the planning portion of the master plan and turn toward uh, actually getting uh, some of the recommendations completed. And then finally, we'd like to let you know how to provide comments on the draft master plan. Uh, as we're opening up a comment period this evening, that comment period will be open uh, through the end of October, and we'll make sure that you know how to submit those comments in a variety of ways and have time to uh, provide your thoughts on the plan as we wrap it up. First, a few housekeeping items. So this forum is being recorded. It will be available to watch for those unable to attend live with us now. Uh, during the presentation, participants will be muted. Uh, you do have access to the chat for questions or comments. And then of course you can unmute yourself and ask questions during that question uh, period later on as well. We have a few Zoom polls uh, that will occur throughout the meeting. Those will just pop up on your screen when we get to them uh, and we'll be getting some feedback uh, from you in that way this meeting. So I mentioned our staff, we've had a dedicated team at MAPC working with the town to draft this master plan and are very thankful for their expertise uh, in this process. I'd like to recognize Andrea, Courtney, Mara, Adi, and Travis for all of their contributions to this process. You'll be hearing from some of our team members this evening as we summarize the plan content tonight. If you don't know about MAPC, hopefully you do by now, as you've joined us probably for a couple of meetings throughout this process, but we're the Greater Boston Region's Regional Planning Agency. We provide planning assistance to the 101 cities and towns in the region, including Rentham. Uh, we've been happy to assist the town in this important work and have done, uh, have completed master plans in, in many of our other municipalities as well. So we're happy to be along with you through this process and supporting you in this way. So as I mentioned, our, our first Zoom poll, this is very similar to what we've been doing throughout each of our master plan meetings. 
uh, we've been trying to keep track of uh, our audiences in terms of demographics and how that relates and compares to the townwide demographics uh, as we move through this process, just to see how our, our reach and um, participation has been. So let me just pull up this first poll for you. And it is launched now. It's a poll about who, who is out there in our audience today. I see almost 30 participants on the, the Zoom today. Uh, and so these questions are pretty straightforward. You're welcome to answer, prefer not to answer if you don't want to. But we'd invite you to do that so that we can compare who's in the meeting with us tonight, again, to the townwide demographics. So those questions include, do you live, work, and or own a business and rent them? What is your age? What is your race or ethnicity? What is your household income? And have you participated in a previous master plan event? So we'll leave this open just for a couple more minutes, or I guess another minute or so, as the participation is rolling in on our side, I can see that. And we thank you for providing these straightforward answers to help us gauge how the participation has been going. We've also been asking these questions in the online surveying that we've been doing through this process and have been tracking that as well. So 72% have participated. Just give it another minute to see if there's a few more answers that can get completed. All right, looks like we're sitting pretty steady at 72%. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll now. I'll share back the results so you can see them too. So the, the majority of respondents live in Rentham, are Rentham residents. Some also uh, work in Rentham or own a business in Rentham. And those, those may in fact be, have multiple hats that a few people are wearing. The largest age cohort looks like a three-way tie between 35 to 44 years, 45 to 54 years, and 55 to 64 years, followed by 65 plus. And we also have some participation in the 19 to 24 year age range. So good to see you all. Thank you for the nice diversity of age there. Uh, race and ethnicity, predominantly white, which um, is what we've seen in many of our previous meetings as well, followed by 6% black or African-American. So thank you for joining us. And finally, household, pop or household uh, income level. It looks like the largest percentage there is one of uh, above 200,000 followed by uh, preferring to keep that confidential. And then <clears throat> 50 to 99, 9, 99, 99, 99, almost 100,000 and um, 150 to almost 200,000. And then in terms of participation in previous master plan events, the majority, 76%, have participated. So thank you very much for, for participating along this process with us. And it's great to see some newcomers as well. So welcome to this process. And we hope that you can get involved and maybe get your neighbors involved in this final comment period as well. So thank you for sharing that information with us. It helps a lot to see and feel who's out there uh, beyond the Zoom squares and get a little more information about who you are. So let's first jump into the master plan process. So the process has really built um, a strong foundation for uh, this content that we're sharing with you this evening. And we'll talk through the details of what this process has been like, particularly for those who have not been with us for parts of that process. So first off, what's a master plan? A master plan is a town-wide planning effort that will guide decision-making and priorities in the town over the next 10 years. A master plan is developed through a public process that engages residents and stakeholders through a series of workshops, meetings, and surveys. The plan content has been guided by research, data, and analysis, and your community feedback. The entire process has been guided, as we mentioned, by the master plan committee, and then the master plan itself will be adopted by the planning board. 
Topics of the master plan include economic development, land use, open space and recreation, housing, transportation, historical and cultural resources, community facilities and services, and energy and sustainability. So this master plan process has been built on a very strong foundation of community engagement. The entire process is presented in detail on the project webpage, and you can see that on the screen now. So that's at www.mapc.ma slash Rentham Vision. The master plan steering committee has met throughout the process to guide the work. Progress presentations have been given to town boards and committees. A series of online townwide workshops and surveys have expanded the number of responses at each step of the way. We've hosted public forums and focus group meetings to discuss the plan content with residents of Rentham. And as Rachel mentioned, a really um, commendable participation rate, um, overall tallying, uh, uh, reaching about 10% of the population, which I think is, is very uh, strong participation rate for this type of process. So we thank you all for being a part of it. So the, the process has been divided into two phases. Uh, the first phase began in June of 2020 with a focus on economic development and housing uh, and a townwide vision statement. The content of that first phase was uh, drafted around uh, the summer of 2021, last summer. And from there, uh, really, we kicked off phase two, which began in the fall of 2021 and is nearing its completion with this final community forum. The second phase has had a focus on land use, open space, transportation, historical and cultural resources, community facilities and services, and energy and sustainability. Many of you and your neighbors have already participated in the process, 75% of you this evening. Uh, this is just one example of an overview of some of the more detail around these occasions for engagement in the process. So this was from a community survey in phase two around the topics that was out at the end of last year. Received great turnout with nearly 800 responses. And then that's combined with uh, responses from the other surveys, from the other workshops, participation at each of the events to get to that number that Rachel mentioned. So this is uh, really uh, a fantastic uh, momentum that's been carried throughout a long process and we appreciate everyone being along with us. We've compiled the feedback uh, and it's reflected in the content of this draft plan. So we've, we've pulled all of your feedback in along the way, analyzed it for patterns, priorities, recurring themes, and that's what you see in the master plan that we have for you this evening. So a central feature of the plan's content is the vision statement. It provides the overarching direction that we heard from those many voices in this process. It can be referenced to judge whether future decisions are strengthening or diminishing the vision of the town. So even if something isn't specifically addressed in the master plan, this vision statement can be referred back to as sort of a litmus test against those future decisions which the town may be faced with. So the vision statement reads, Rentham is a charming town, proud of its downtown and open space and a great place to raise a family. This statement is expanded through a series of more detailed aspirations, including continue to cultivate a community oriented and welcoming culture for all, regardless of race, religion, gender, or age, protect more farmland and open space for cultural heritage, scenic beauty, habitat, and water quality, become more walkable and bikeable with sidewalks and trails, strengthen the downtown with more small businesses, dining options, homes, and places to gather. Maintain the rural landscape by promoting sustainable land use patterns and shifting away from sprawl development. Encourage diversity 
with a mix of housing options affordable to young adults, families, households with lower incomes, and seniors. Ensure fiscal responsibility while maintaining high quality infrastructure and services. Support a healthy economy with a mix of businesses, good job opportunities, and a diverse tax base. And continue to be a great place to raise a family with strong schools and more community events. With all of these aspirations supported by transparent governance, strong civic engagement, and volunteerism. So in addition to this vision for Rentham, we'd like to share an overview and orientation to the master plan content. So the vision statement is the overarching starting point for the more detailed master plan content that is organized by the topics that I've mentioned. The topics again, as you see in the blue bubbles on this slide, include economic development, land use, open space and recreation, transportation, historical and cultural resources, housing, community facilities and services, and energy and sustainability. For each topic, a set of goals is presented that adds further detail to the vision statement. And then a series of strategies is provided for each goal to add direction and to help define implementation. In each topic, an analysis of existing conditions and trends has been uh, prepared and is presented in an appendix of the plan. So there's a lot of really useful and in-depth detail and analysis uh, for each of these topic areas. All in all, that's eight master plan topics. Across those eight topics, uh, there's a total of 39 goals divided amongst them. 193 strategies are offered to add detail and depth to the 39 goals. And then on the bottom of this slide, you can see how each of those uh, strategies are distributed amongst the goals and amongst the topics, excuse me. So pretty well distributed and provide quite a bit of information to go on in terms of how to approach implementation of the goals and ultimately support for that vision statement and the aspirations associated with it. So now we're gonna painstakingly go through one by one, 193 master plan strategies. No, just kidding. We're, we're gonna give you an overview tonight and then invite you to look at those details uh, with the plan uh, that you can download from the website. We wanted to make sure that you all had a feel for the content of the plan at, at a high level this evening. But we did want to provide an example. So this is what you can see in the plan, uh, an example of the type of goals and strategies that are represented in it. So uh, this shown on the screen now, we have an example from transportation. The goal is to support walking and biking in the town with particular attention to connecting to the downtown and other key destinations. You can see for in this example, these eight strategies each add detail for how this could be accomplished. So uh, those range from incorporating complete streets elements, which the town now has a policy for, to working with MassDOT on the town's state roads, uh, to ensuring future development and those approvals which come along with it, prioritize walking, biking, and accessibility around town, and then working with other programs such as the Safe Routes to School, and including more trees along streets and sidewalks for a variety of reasons. So these are all more detailed strategies which would support walking and biking and support the ultimate vision for Rentham. So these, this is representative again of those 39 goals. So you would see in the master plan, this is one of those goals and the uh, 193 strategies, which add detail to those goals. So another way to think about a, a summary for the master plan is to think about it graphically and spatially. So this is a spatial representation of some of the plan concepts shown on a townwide map of Rentham. So on this map, a few areas are highlighted 
the focus we've heard for priority growth areas include town center, the downtown, and the Rentham Developmental Center. Additional economic opportunity areas include the premium outlet areas and Route 1 South, uh, that corridor there. And then historic village centers include Sheldonville and Wampum Corner with historic and, historic and cultural asset clusters existing in those locations, as well as in the town center and developmental center. And then finally, preservation areas occur around the lakes, the state forest, West Rentham, and other parts of the town. So you can see this is a, a graphic and spatial summary of some of the concepts that you would see both represented in the vision statement that I walked through and in the more detailed goals and strategies. So in reflecting on uh, how we could present and summarize this information for you this evening without making this into a, a really uh, too long and detailed meeting, we uh, were looking through the goals and reflecting on them as a team to think of a few overarching themes which are represented across the goals. And so we've identified five overarching themes which we think uh, are, are help to categorize and summarize the master plan content. So we're now gonna go through our team and present uh, these findings and connect them back to specific goals of the master plan that are reflected in each theme. So I'll start with this first one. So all of the uh, 39 goals, which I've mentioned, are divided across the, these five themes. So you'll see uh, in that blue, or the yellow box in the corner of this slide, a little bit of that tabulation by topic. Um, so this first theme uh, is preserve open space and natural resources. And we heard this as a priority from the community loud and clear through all of that participation in this process that we've mentioned. So this, of course, is a central feature of the open space and recreation chapter, which includes goals such as protecting watersheds and water quality, advancing preservation of unprotected open space, and protecting sensitive habitats. Some of those same themes also show up in the goals for land use and preserving unprotected open space and protecting rural landscapes, in housing to protect open space and discourage development and previously undeveloped areas of the town and in transportation through exploring alternatives to single occupancy vehicles and seeking more sustainable approaches and forms of transportation. And then finally, in the energy and sustainability chapter, exploring opportunities for new clean energy generation and promoting water management and conservation in the town. So all of these goals come along with more detailed strategies that will help the town to accomplish some of these uh, but they all point back to this overarching theme, which has been critically important and a priority that has been mentioned throughout uh, community members' conversations with us, which is to preserve open space and natural resources. So we've tried to do that in a number of ways and from a variety of perspectives in this plan content. And just to think of, again about that spatially, this map shows uh, the existing protected open space areas. Uh, and that's the context for these goals, really. So you can see the Rentham State Forest, the uh, Gilbert Hills State Forest areas, the areas around the lakes. So those areas which showed up previously on that uh, future land use concept map as areas to be preserved, you can see the areas in uh, that I mentioned in West Rentham as well. So uh, these are the existing open spaces. Uh, they are areas where potential um, conservation efforts or low impact development efforts uh, adjacent to them uh, should, should well be considered uh, and will help to um, con continue this pattern of conservation and protection in the town. And one of the focuses that we were discussing with the master plan committee, for example, is the creation of uh, contiguous wildlife habitats, so connections that help uh, the health of both wildlife habitats and the wildlife themselves with patterns of migration and uh, the ability to move from one part of the town to the other. So uh, let's move along to the next theme and I'll pass this along to Mara Holland and Adi Nocher uh, to talk us through it. Thanks, Josh. 
Um, so our next overarching theme is supporting safe and welcoming neighborhoods. And uh, this theme encompasses goals from uh, land use, housing, transportation, and historical and cultural resources. Um, as we know, um, supporting safe and welcoming neighborhoods happens um, on our streets, happens um, in, in housing, um, and in all these different uh, pieces of the town. Um, so in, in land use, thinking about creating walkable neighborhoods as well as in transportation, creating opportunities for more people to be able to walk, bike, and roll. And by roll, we mean um, things like skateboarding or using a wheelchair or pushing a stroller, you know, the other varieties of ways people um, need to and want to get around town. Um, also encouraging a variety of housing options so that more people can consider rent them home. Um, thoughtfully uh, promoting deed restricting affordable housing. Um, so more folks uh, with a variety of incomes um, can come to rent them. Um, increasing roadway safety, especially for users that are more vulnerable, which may include people walking or biking, um, young children, especially those walking to school, um, seniors um, and people with disabilities as well. Um, and then um, from historical and cultural resources, also thinking about broadening and deepening Rentham's uh, documented history. Um, as we know, um, history goes um, beyond our, our um, most recent history that, that we have documented. And so thinking about how are we representing that history um, for all the people that have called Rentham home um, in the past as well. And so I will hand it off to Adi to talk about our maps. Thanks so much, Mara, for, for that overview. Um, my name is Adi Nocher. I'm a senior transportation planner at MAPC. And as you all just heard from Mara, uh, supporting safe and welcoming neighborhoods um, plays out in a variety of ways um, in Rentham. And um, I'm going to focus on a couple of the um, transportation aspects of it, but also want to certainly recognize that transportation is intimately connected to land use and to housing and a number of the other issues that we're talking about tonight. So even as we have our own particular lenses that we bring to the table, we want to uh, make sure we're continuing to articulate those cross-cutting connections as well. So uh, this is a map of uh, vehicle crashes in Rentham, taking data from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation over the last couple of years from 2019 to 2021. And you can see there are a number of uh, traffic crashes uh, largely concentrated along major roadways in Rentham and a number of those crashes uh, resulting in non-fatal um, injuries which have uh, significant impacts to the, those involved. So thinking about how we make um, roadways uh, safer is an important goal of um, our transportation focus and certainly in the interest of the town's broader master plan vision as well. So thinking of opportunities to improve um, roadway safety, especially for the most vulnerable roadway users is, is really critical. And so we um, appreciate the opportunity to uplift that as part of our transportation recommendations as part of this cross-cutting theme. And there's a number of different ways we can think about that. And um, along similar lines, um, uh, supporting a self and welcoming community and neighborhoods is very connected to how are we get our folks getting around uh, the town of Rentham. Uh, throughout this master plan process, we've repeatedly heard that walking and biking are top priorities for town residents, especially in and around uh, the downtown village center. And that again connects to one of our master plan goals. As you can see on the map here, there's a number of great um, walking trails in Rentham, uh, especially in the town forest. Um, there's a terrific opportunity with the Metacomet Greenway, the proposed corridor. And we've also heard a lot about um, sidewalks or the lack thereof. Certainly the downtown is pretty well connected with a good sidewalk network, but the further you get away from downtown, uh, the quality of those sidewalks is reduced and um, some neighborhoods and streets don't even have sidewalks at all. So if you're thinking of someone who has limited mobility or someone who's not old enough to drive or, or a senior who might not be able to drive, thinking about those um, non-motorized ways that folks can be getting around town is gonna to be really important. And this ties back to um, the idea of complete streets, which Josh mentioned earlier, and we're pleased to have supported the town in developing a complete streets policy 
uh, which is really about uh, enabling all roadway users, whether you're walking, biking, rolling, taking transit or driving to get around and safely, no matter what your age, what your ability is to make sure that you're able to navigate around the community. So transportation is um, really connected to mobility and how folks are able to get around and experience a community like Rentham. So uh, that I think that sums it up for, for us for now, but happy to take questions as we progress. Thank you, Adi and Mara. And now we're going to pass along to Andrea for the next theme. Thanks, Josh. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrea Harris Long, a senior planner at MAPC. And my theme focuses on investing and growing in Rentham Center. So looking out into the future where Rentham may want to make investments and where growth should occur in um, the town. So Rentham has several existing centers of activity, clusters where businesses, services, infrastructure, and residents live. That conceptual map that Josh showed high, really highlighted where those are. The economic development element that was completed in phase one recognized the value of growing jobs in these areas. That's what the first two goals on this slide gets at. Locating new jobs near these existing centers will allow businesses that already exist to support and collaborate with one another and also be welcoming to new businesses. And it also ensures that an established customer and worker base is available to promote uh, economic development across town. The land use school that's most relevant for this theme really focuses on the benefits of strategically focusing public and private investments in existing centers of growth to attract new opportunities for residents. This is financially strategic as it's more cost effective to maintain and grow in areas that already have some infrastructure. The open space goal um, shown here, it really emphasizes the importance of having different ways to move between centers. Uh, this again ties to the transportation conversation that we just had on the last theme, but if Rentham residents can walk or bike between centers to run their errands or get to work or eat, then that decreases the amount of car traffic on Rentham roads and also just gives more mobility options over time. Um, the phase one housing goal that called for more housing options near town center, um, this is consistent with how Rentham has already zoned this area, and this, um, you know, continues to support the idea of investing and growing in existing centers. If we locate more dense housing in town center rather than other places, then this can be more efficient environmentally. It can limit the sprawl development and protect your existing open spaces as preservation areas. And having more housing options, especially downtown and other centers, can um, support maybe, you know, future expanded transit service or mobility options and business growth. Um, the last two goals that are relevant for this theme are historic and cultural resources goals that recognize that historically Rentham has had a development pattern that has been centers focused and those centers really do remain intact today. Town Center has always been a hub for local activity as has um, Wampum Corner and Sheldonville. And so we wanna make sure that preserving these historic centers is front and center. This was something that was important through the public engagement process and that we, um, you know, the master plan supports appropriate new development while preserving the historic structures and landmarks that exist there. Um, and also making sure that these different centers can remain both vibrant and unique because they are unique in one, from one another and they're cultural destinations that can be appealing for current and future residents. Um, if we go to the next slide, this is just another way of thinking about the centers. So the future land use conceptual map that Josh showed was sort of that high level looking at town. This is getting a little bit more into the details of where the existing commercial districts are specifically. And this is um, just showing ex an example of where um, thinking about those economic development goals where you want commercial growth, new jobs, new um, workers to go. Going in these existing centers will really help to make sure that the economic development in town remains vibrant. Great, thank you very much, Andrea. And to uh, move us along to the next overarching theme is Courtney. Hey, good evening. Uh, so the following goals are organized under an overarching theme that seeks to better serve members of the community. Um, this theme aligns goals, uh, the goals of various uh, subtopic areas including uh, economic development, open space and recreation, transportation, community facilities and services, historical and cultural resources, and energy and sustainability. And we did this to help, uh, to help ensure that planning at all levels in the town is done in an, in an efficient and effective manner. 
um, which also includes meaningful participation and buy-in from residents and property owners, as well as businesses, uh, local institutions, and other community stakeholders. Uh, so the, the first goal um, looks at improving coordination and communication uh, between uh, businesses in the town. So um, in making room for growth and development, really um, ensuring that um, residents and business owners are brought to the table when some of these uh, important decisions happen uh, within the town. Um, the next goal looks at investing and improving in existing resources, uh, including recreational facility facilities, as well as programs and amenities that um, serve the town, and also ensuring that um, these, um, these places and uh, activities are accessible and inclusive for all uh, community members. Um, the third goal looks at um, parking management strategies, especially in areas of the town uh, that uh, tend to have heavier traffic, such as the downtown, and looking for um, uh, solutions uh, to address uh, traffic, but also accessibility. Um, the next goal looks at uh, providing high quality uh, facilities, services, as well as programs that will um, meet community needs and also, um, but that also shift and 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 change with um, as as the population grows and uh, demographics shift. Um, the the next goal looks at strengthening uh, communication between uh, town government and more specifically residents, um, and also being as transparent as possible in uh, in in terms of making some of those larger uh, decisions and also gathering uh, buy-in from the community um, so that so that everyone's on the same page and everyone's moving in the same direction. Uh, the next goal looks at um, hosting more uh, community events to bring um, the community together and also uh, hosting some of those events um, at sites, at historic and cultural sites, um, so that people have an opportunity to uh, share their history, their culture, and also um, their life ex experiences um, um, and feel embraced by, by community. Um, the last two goals look at uh, energy and sustainability in terms of um, uh, in terms of reducing greenhouse gases um, for not only uh, town-owned public facilities but also um, holistically as as the town um, and ensuring that residents have access to programs and incentives that will help the town reach its sustainability goals. Um, and again, um, the, the last goal really looks at just making sure that all of the, all of the good work that the town has already uh, done and all of the steps that have already been taken to, um, to inch the, the town closer to its uh, sustainability goals are all aligned and um, uh, overlap. Uh, and this is just a quick uh, look at some of the um, some of the public uh, facilities uh, and properties that the the town uh, owns and actively manages. Um, some of these areas are um, are locations of, of public schools, uh, the the town library, town hall, um, fire stations. Uh, and this just gives you a better uh, look at how things are distributed and dispersed throughout the town. Um, for instance, um, this, um, 
this is extremely important when you start to look at um, e emergency rescue services, ensuring that you have facilities located uh, in areas of, uh, of town uh, so that um, this, these important services that are needed are have a, um, a good response time, uh, regardless of uh, where a person may live in town. It also just shows, uh, as Josh mentioned, some of the parks and open spaces uh, and community resources that are um, open and available to the public. Great, thank you very much, Courtney. So finally, we the final theme uh, that we identified through reflecting on the master plan's goals as a collection, uh, we heard throughout this process and in all topics the need to support implementation uh, and to think about innovative and creative ways to help get things done. So uh, moving from this planning process and pivoting toward uh, acting upon this, this great um, strength in engagement and reflection on the community's needs that this process has been, but now to turn toward uh, actually activating and acting upon them. So these may include targeted planning and zoning efforts to shape future growth, uh, working with the state to develop a vision at the developmental center, leveraging attractions such as the premium outlets and the rice complex for economic development, or developing a sustainable short and long-term capital improvement and maintenance plan. Timely assessment of infrastructure needs, uh, better protection of historic and cultural resources, develop, developing a community-wide action plan uh, and preparing for the impacts of climate change and reducing the overall municipal energy costs. So these are some of the approaches which shift toward um, acting on the recommendation of the master plan and moving uh, steps closer incrementally toward the overall vision that's been articulated through this process. So we hope uh, in presenting information in this way that we're able to, in a relatively short time, give you a feel for uh, the overarching content of the master plan the synergies between various topics of the master plan and the um, overarching themes of that content. Uh, we'll pause here to see if there's any questions and, and we can have a little discussion at this point with members of the audience. So uh, we would be curious to know if, if you have any questions or need for clarification. If in general you have comments or additional thoughts, we'd be happy to hear. Um, and then we also, We'll provide more detail later in this presentation, but do at this time want to also say that questions and comments uh, outside of this meeting can be submitted via email or via a public comment survey, which we've put together for the purpose of receiving comments during the comment period. Um, so that survey link is on the screen there at mapc.ma slash master plan final. Uh, and you can see my email address and Rachel's email address as well. So any any of those ways, we'd be happy to receive comments. And, and I will note for, I think I recognize this, a few names on the participant list this evening um, where I have re received some emails within the past couple of days by a few attendees. So I have re received those and thank you. I didn't get a moment to reply just yet, um, but that's a perfectly great way to send us feedback and comments. So let me pause there and see if anyone would like to Either raise your hand or maybe turn your video on and we'll recognize you and you can ask a question. I'm, I'm pausing long enough such that it might be a little awkward so that we can make sure that anyone, anyone wants doesn't want to. Can you, can you, yes. can you hear me? I'm I sorry, can, I'm, yes. in a, in a, I'm in a car. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't, I've been listening along and and I just wanted to, to sort of ask, right? So some of like the ongoing uh, um, things I'm seeing in the town um, in terms of development are sort of going against sort of the pillars of, of, of this, this, 
you know, future plan. You know, for example, there's, there's, you know, development in the works or, or, or plan, right, for land abutting the farm and the new bike path, right? So I'm just curious if, if this, if the goals are sort of like from a date and time forward or or, or, or is it sort of like uh, uh, as all the development sort of a case-by-case -case basis? Uh, that's a very good question. I think, um, and I'm happy to have invite others into response, but I'll, I'll start us off. Um, the, the master plan is really setting the stage for um, some of the implementation ac actions that I just mentioned which um, may entail um, taking a closer look at some sections of the zoning bylaw. Uh, and so if the town is finding that development proposals are uh, coming forward and, and or being approved based upon the current zoning, and, and some may think that those are inconsistent with this vision, then that, that's a good indication that um, to perhaps look at some of those as an implementation activity. So there's no, um, there is an additional step, I guess is another way to say it, that the master plan in and of itself would not change those development results, but it would indicate the need to change the zoning bylaw, which would dictate those results. So it, it doesn't, uh, the plan, this plan itself does not change the development outcomes just yet. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's more—it's more of—it's more of a case by case. Well, not I wouldn't necessarily. Yeah, I guess um, it depends. That that is a is a bit of a decision that the town can make um, as to whether or not case by case is, is desirable. So, uh, depending on how um, you would like to uh, revise your regulations as a community, the. Um, regulations could be very clear uh, about compliance with this vision and which would make it less of a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes uh, that type of um, uh, restriction is, is less desirable because there are, are um, occasions where um, having some discretion in the decision is desirable and to benefit of the town and could actually align it with this vision. So it, it is, it's tough to have a one size fit all, but I think that is a discussion with the community as to whether or not um, there are some changes that should be made to prevent certain types of development that are currently occurring in certain locations. And that, that would be um, consistent with this vision we're outlining. Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's, that's a reasonable response. I, I, I hear you and it's, it, it, it's definitely gonna be hard to do a one size fits all, but I think what I'm, what I'm looking for as a citizen of the town is sort of that consistency with, with the approach. So and I appreciate I appreciate that, um, that feedback here. Thank, thank you for the question as well. Uh, any other questions? This looks like uh, Jerry McGovern, a master plan committee member, see your hand up. Go ahead, Jerry, if you can unmute, I think you can. Got it, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you kind of addressed this a little bit in your answer to Mr. Green's question, but it might be worthwhile just to explain how this is the, the roadmap, but it's not what's written in black and white for what has to happen. And that becomes part of the implementation plan, and then how that then filters down to the, the board of selectmen, the planning board, and other, other boards and committees to actually implement that. So it's, it is a little bit of a, of a 50,000 foot level that has to granulate down. Um, the great thing about this is that it provides really good input from the community on what they believe and think. And it still becomes incumbent on a lot of participation at different boards and community levels to actually make it happen. And I, I think you can speak to that better than I can, but I, I think that was kind of an unsaid thing at the beginning here, that this is just, just the roadmap and not, not the implementation. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, that's a, that's a very good prompt. So it is true that this, uh, the strength in this plan is um, the uh, listening and reflection that the community has done in this joint process that's now reflected in the document. 
But the, to implement this plan, uh, it does require continued effort by uh, many across the town. Um, uh, as part of that, uh, just a, a reflection in, in the sort of um, outreach, which is continuing and occurring. So we will be as a team with your uh, director of planning, communicating this draft master plan to other boards and committees. So this week, we're also presenting the draft master plan to uh, the Board of Selectmen, uh, to the Conservation Commission, to the Planning Board. Um, and those are uh, bodies of implementation, which will be hopefully taking this vision up and trying to align the town's policies and bylaws appropriately. Um, another effective approach to implementation is to uh, define a master plan implementation committee. We've seen that used successfully as a model in other municipalities in the region. Um, and that uh, master plan implementation committee is, is an effective way to uh, move forward some of these ideas which are dependent on further action and activity by members of the town, uh, both boards, committees, and residents. So uh, that's, that's an effective approach which we will be defining in a master plan implementation uh, chapter, which we're writing. We're actually, uh, as part of this meeting this evening, we'll be getting your insights uh, through a poll about some of your preferences and priorities for implementation. But yes, this is, is a roadmap, but it, it does not um, close the deal, so to speak, on many of these aspects of, of the town's vision. I see a hand up by Sherry Walker. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. So I have not been uh, much involved in the process, but one of my questions is how much effort is being placed on waste management um, for the town to go to composting, um, more informative recycling effort, uh, discussions for, uh, for example, the upcoming ban of textiles into the waste stream, how can Rentham be a leader? Um, and maybe how can Rentham uh, capitalize on maybe its farm uh, lands to see if maybe the farmers might be interested in having the composting materials brought to them where they can then in turn create and be, you know, beautiful soil to then be sold. Just a thought. Um, so that's just uh, one of the thoughts I had about that. Has there been any? Um, discussion in that regard. Yes, th thank you, Sherry. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say, um, I don't know that details of composting or cycling have actually made their way into this plan, not to say that they shouldn't, and that's a, that's a reasonable comment. I think that in, in general, that um, sustainable approaches to how the town functions um, in terms of its energy use, its water management. Those have been uh, topics which have been spoken to more specifically, but I think composting, recycling and waste management fall into that same category of responsible and sustainable practices of the town. Um, so I think that the, the overarching ideas uh, that are showing up in the plan are consistent with what your question is asking, but I, I don't recall many specific references to that yet, but um, we could potentially find a home for it in this plan. I think it's consistent with it. Josh, I will, uh, this is Courtney. I will just <laughs> note that um, one of the uh, goals or strategies, I believe outlined for sustainability um, uh, notes, creating a climate action plan and that is where you would get into some of those more specific details in terms of composting, um, providing, um, uh, in incorporating uh, sustainable features in uh, existing but also uh, new newly constructed buildings. Um, and it would also take, uh, this is why we discuss uh, the goals in terms of things because it, that would uh, that would um, need 
the uh, help and assistance from various departments. So DPW, for instance, may have the compost, may be the host for a composting facility or site. Um, sure. But then you would also have to work with volunteers uh, or um, people from the Open Space and Recreation Committee whose focus and, um, and, and goals are, um, you know, preserving the natural environment, but also um, um, creating more a more sustainable future. Uh, and so it would it would take action action on um, action from various departments. Um, but I, as I noted before, I think where uh, you get into the specifics of like uh, your suggestion of composting, uh, those things are detailed and defined and the, the climate act would be um, detailed in the climate action plan. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sherry, for the question. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll think about that if there's an appropriate place in the master plan as well to make the reference. I'd, as Courtney was speaking, I did take a quick look and we do not mention composting in the draft plan as it currently is drafted. Uh, we do mention recycling in a number of contexts and different chapters, uh, but it might be worthwhile to uh, think about composting as well. I uh, are there other, that. Yeah, no <laughs> are there other questions, uh, thoughts from the materials this evening? Br uh, I yes, have, Bryson. Oh, 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 sorry. Do you have another question? Right? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, it, it flips over to another side where we were talking about water management. <clears throat> Excuse me. And on a MAGA scale, you know, we're seeing out with the Colorado River and how it affects, um, you know, Lake Mead and such. We here in Rentham are at the top or the, the top of four aquifers. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, you're, you're at the confluence of several watersheds. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Wrong terminology. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I was curious to know what kind of plans the town is considering in uh, educating the population on how important it is for Rentham residents in the area to towns to be very conservative of water relative to its down gradient uh, receptors or users. Mm -hmm. has, something, has something like that been brought up? I'm sorry bringing this in at the last point of the process. No, that's fine. No, no water. Water management and conservation uh, it was a conversation throughout this process, and it's something that we did highlight and elevate uh, at the committee's recommendation to a goal within the energy and sustainability section. And uh, what we tried to do in this process is actually point to and elevate the town's previously uh, and recently completed master uh, water master plan, which goes into great depth and detail more so than we can in this broader master plan about uh, both water management and conservation and sort of communicating that and the importance right. of it to the broader population. Uh, not, not to mention also many detailed recommendations about the water infrastructure of the town as well. So that's, that's some, I'm glad you mentioned it. It's something that we want to highlight and promote is that the water, or the Rentham does have an excellent water master plan um, and it, it should be more broadly known by the residents and community. Yes, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, looks like Bryson as well. Hi, sorry, I had to unmute. I'm Beth Bryson and I'm a resident of Taunton Street. Um, so I've, I've been a resident since 2011 and um, in the past decade, it's, it's, it's gotten extremely busy on Taunton Street, um, which, which has been a good thing because there's lots of amenities near us and we enjoy that. Um, but you know, the, the street is definitely um, in need, I think of some public safety. So um, I had reached out with a few other residents prior to the, the second phase of the master plan. Um, and I just wanted to just mention that, um, you know, through word of mouth, we've had a lot of residents get together 
um, because of this process. And um, some residents are on Redbird Lane and then others are um, um, up the hill there behind the courthouse. I forget the name of the street, um, but all you know, roads that are off of Taunton. Um, and it, you know, it's definitely, I think, an integral road to um, to the downtown, and not just for the residents, but just for for the residents on the street, but for the, for the people of the town, because we have a lot of amenities on this street that people you know could go to. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, there's there's the the Maples Rehabilitation Center, the school, um, Trout Pond. There is um, the senior center, the building department. Um, it, you know, it, it just has a lot to offer for, for walkability, um, but it poses a little bit of a issue in terms of safety because there aren't sidewalks. So I think I just, it would, you know, it'd be important to highlight that improvements in the town if they're prioritized that this road is really busy um, because it intersects with, with directly with the center. Um, but then it extends all the way to Route 1. So there's like high traffic centers there for retail and apartment buildings and a casino. And, and, and just with all of that traffic coming directly into our town on our road, I think there's just a group of you know residents on this street that think this would be great um, to have an improvement um, on the street for safety and pedestrian access. Because there's, there's also a lot of seniors. This is an older street. It's you know, the homes have been here. Um, a lot of the original homes in the town and families have kept these homes in their in their families. So um, there's 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 a lot of seniors on this on this street who, you know, feel like it's unsafe. So I just thought it was important to um, highlight that during this process, um, because a lot of the seniors that I've spoken to don't really have technical assistance and they're not really familiar with virtual processes like Zoom and things like that. So they need they need some help in that regard. So I'm um, just, just here to point that out. Thank you very much, Beth. That sounds, sounds um, very consistent with the transportation themes and goals that are represented in the master plan. Um, and Adi or Mara, Mara, I don't know if you have any more specific thoughts about if you've come across Taunton Street and any of your complete streets work or the like. Yeah, I'll jump in quickly. Thank Josh and um, Beth. Nice to hear from you again. I think um, you and I reconnect connected in one of the breakouts at um, one of the earlier meetings about some of these issues. So I um, appreciate you raising this again. And you know, definitely as Mara and I have been engaged in the transportation work, you know, we've heard a lot about Taunton Street. We've seen how jammed up it gets during um, school pickup and, and drop off at the arrival and, and dismissal times in the morning and, and afternoon. We know the Maples Complex is right there on, on next to the Rentham Common. And we actually did um, a pedestrian safety audit um, of the downtown and in part we looked at the intersection of Taunton Street with um, the Rentham Common and so we make a number of recommendations there that could hopefully make a difference in terms of roadway safety and then the complete streets element um, which we've mentioned earlier I think also gives the town a great opportunity to think about what safety upgrades could look like on Taunton Street that accommodate all the different roadway users, um, different travel modes, and different demographics that are using uh, Taunton Street to get around, whether it's seniors at the Maples or young children going to and, and from the school. So, you know, we definitely want to continue to pay attention to those issues. We think we've um, reflected it in the master plan. And I think um, the implementation around complete streets and walkability, some of the recommendations that we've come up with through some of these other processes will um, hopefully make a positive difference. So uh, thank you for your uh, continued raising of these issues and uh, engagement. Thank you, Adi. Thank and, you so much. Uh, I'll just. I'll just add that the town does have a pavement um, management program on page two, which is basically the last uh, page of the study. There's a map of every um, road in the town and it prioritizes the need for repair and rehabilitation based on the assessment of that study. Um, so you may want to also check that out as well. Oh, thank you. I didn't know that. Where, where can I find that again? Where would that be? It should be listed on the town's website. And if you give me a second, I can probably um, post the link in the, the chat. Oh, OK. Great. Thank you so much, Courtney. Thanks, Beth. Thanks for the continued participation. Any, any other questions um, 
we have time for a couple more if there are any or, or other, otherwise we can move on to the next agenda item, but I'll pause for one more moment. Yes, Sherry again. Hi. Again, coming kind of into late of the process, so this question is, might just be um, mute. Move. But anyways, um, there had been people talking about uh, putting uh, turbines on top of uh, Sweat Hill. Are there other things like, have there been discussions that every single public building in the town should have uh, solar systems and, and backup generators and uh, plans for getting, weaning um, them off of you know, petroleum-based projects or fossil fuels. Um, I, I know that would probably fall under energy and sustainability. But it's, it's a curiosity question. Yes, that that is in, included in the energy and sustainability goals is to seek alternative energy resources and sources uh, in the town, which would in, may include um, solar, amongst other technologies. Um, I, I would say that what we heard through the community discussion discussion on the master plan is that there's a desire to investigate those um, clean energy resources, but also to ensure that those process of investigation balance potential impacts on abutting properties uh, and other um, considerations for the town. So I would say that it's, um, it, that it is definitely, uh, a goal, it shows up in the goals and strategies to help to try to move the town in that direction. Um, but that there's also um, consideration for not, not making any un, unintended consequences occur in that process. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And please tell Courtney, we appreciate that he uh, uh, accessed that list of uh, projects for roadways. Yes, thank you, Courtney. <laughs> A any other uh, questions? Um, I, I do want to make sure we have time to speak to the uh, implementation priorities and get that input from you all this evening. All right, so not, not seeing any last hands fly up. I will go ahead and move us along. If you do have um, a thought, we, we could entertain it at the very end of the meeting. But let's go ahead and move along at this point and just talk about implementation priorities first. So uh, in discussion with the master plan committee, we had um, identified the top goal by polling the committee itself within each topic. So you see what's reflected on the screen. This list of bullet points is the top goal um, so the um, eight goals from the eight different topics uh, based upon the committee's input. And we'd like to ask a polling question that um, gets a sense from this group, and we'll be repeating this in the um, follow-up uh, community-wide survey uh, to get additional feedback. But we'd like to just see, based upon this short list, what would be your top priority for implementation it's not to say that this would be the only item that gets implemented, but it might be a good place to start implementation momentum to get the ball rolling with the town and to make sure that things there's actions being taken from this effort. So let me bring up this next poll. And it basically repeats these same, <clears throat> the same goals which you see on your screen. So these again are, are one goal from each of the different topics that we've been discussing. And you can choose just one. So we're trying to get, get to a, a priority here. But if you had to pick one out of this list, wh which do you think would be the most important to get moving on straight away? And those include pursuing strategic and innovative strategies for new economic opportunities, leveraging investments to strengthen existing centers of growth, protecting watersheds, groundwater, and improving water infrastructure guiding development towards town center and areas with infrastructure, support walking, biking, and rolling infrastructure, 
provide high quality facilities and services, as well as programs, preserve and add to the historic character of Rentham and explore opportunities for new economically feasible clean energy generation, which points to the, the question which we just heard from Sherry, in fact. Right about 65% participated so far. I'll give it just another few seconds. So you can click on one of these goals to see, to help give us a feel for where some implementation attention might be most warranted. All right, we're at 66% now. I'll go ahead and end the poll and share it back to you all. So it looks like the um, pursuing strategic and innovative strategies for new economic opportunities, and these would be economic opportunities that relate back to that spatial map that we shared earlier in, in the downtown and developmental center area, premium outlet area uh, along Route 1. So that would be uh, the most uh, votes at 21% tied with guide development towards town center and areas with infrastructure. So really concentrate that growth and reduce um, development, which is occurring in other parts of the town. And that's uh, actually, I'm re misreading my own results. So uh, ahead of both of those, which are tied for second slash third is protect watersheds, groundwater and improve water infrastructure. So that would be number one at 29% protect watersheds, groundwater, and improve water infrastructure. And we also see um, following those three, support for walking, biking, and rolling infrastructure. And then lastly, there were votes also for preserve and add to the historic character of Rentham and explore opportunities for new economically feasible clean energy generation. So thank you. We'll, we'll expand the sample size of this meeting with the follow-up survey, uh, which we'll give you the link to momentarily. Uh, but this is a good start in helping us to get a feel for implementation priorities. The other thing we want to ask about uh, an approach to implementation is just a little bit about your preferences in regard to these, um, I guess, characteristics of implementation programming. So the first is timing. Let me just actually bring this last, sir, this is the last of our polls for this evening. And these polls are, um, you can rank your preference and you, you should see it as a sort of a rating scale in the question this time. So uh, in terms of timing, your preferences on implement, implementation timing would be to bias implementation towards short-term actions or long-term actions. Uh, and for example, on um, what are your preferences for implementation investment would you prefer an approach which focuses on low cost investments or major investments? Uh, and then a preference for implementation support. Should we focus on actions which would work with what the town has presently in terms of resources? Or should we be looking to expand support and capacity? Like what, what would be the best approach to, in your mind? And then the last two, or the last, um, you know, last two, are for funding support. Should we be focusing on actions which relate and are supported by town resources or should we be focused on those which are external resources? And you can select anywhere along that gradation of between one to five on those scales. And then lastly, uh, what's your preference for um, the magnitude of change through these implementation activities? Are we looking at minor improvements or are you further down the scale toward major transformation. So if you give us your reaction to those five uh, rating scales between those two uh, polls, which I've just described, this would give us a lot of help as we think about and reflect on the best approach to implementation to really get the town started on moving from um, this plan and vision to making sure that there are um, meaningful actions that are taking place. 
And we'd also like those actions, the types of actions to be aligned with what the community would like to see as well. So it'd be very helpful, this feedback. So we're at 52% presently. I'll let it keep going for another couple seconds. All right, we just jumped up to 71%. So that's about what we've been getting throughout this meeting. All right, so I will just give it one more second since we saw it jump up again. Okay, I will stop it now. Let's share, I'm interested in these. This looks pretty good. So the uh, results should be showing up on your screen now. So the first, your preferences for implementation timing, it looks like it's more um, weighted toward the short-term side of that scale as opposed to long-term. So we have the most in the middle at 31%, but then uh, followed by the two, which would be towards short-term. And then the one and the five are also tied. I think if we average that out, it would be leaning toward the short term on that scale. If you look at your preferences for implementation investment, it looks like they would be uh, probably averaging out in this case toward major investments. So it looks like more votes are headed towards the three, the four and the five, and the five was in this case, major investment. Next is preferences for implementation support. And this was right in the middle. Um, so it looks like maybe a little bit more preference toward expanding support and capacity, but by far 50% were at the, the middle of that scale between working with what you have and expanding support and capacity. So that might, that's not uh, you know, a fair result, might include uh, looking at both of those approaches. And then uh, looking at implementation funding support, Looks like there's most preference for uh, the middle of that scale moving toward the external resources, so grants, state programs, or the like, as opposed to town resources, which is a logical position. And finally, to think about whether you prefer minor or major improvements, this looks pretty evenly split, although maybe just a little bit more toward major investments, which would be the top of that scale of five. The middle uh, three again was the most votes, but it looks like there are a few more, just a couple more votes at number four than at number two. So we'll, we'll unpack those results in, with a little more analysis post meeting. And uh, as I mentioned, combine it with additional results, which will come through, we hope, through the community survey, which will be open uh, and extend past this meeting. So let's talk about what's, what is past this meeting briefly and the next steps of this process. So first off, we invite you all in attendance this evening and those of you who may be viewing a recording of this meeting to download the draft plan. And you can find that at the um, master plan website, which is mapc.ma slash Rentham vision. And right at the top of the website, you'll see a, a button, which you can press, which says download the draft plan. And that will uh, begin the download for you. And we invite you uh, to do that and to take a look at it. The public comment period for the draft plan will be open, as I mentioned, through October 31st. So we invite you um, at your leisure between now and then to take a look at the sections that interest you, if there's a particular topic, or if you're interested in a few, or if you're, you're really interested in all things Rentham, you can uh, take a look at the entire plan and provide as many comments as you would like. Uh, if you're curious about this process and how the plan was developed in more detail, um, all the recordings of meetings, materials, and previous efforts as part of the master plan are posted on the same project website. So there's a wealth of information, data, and resources there. Um, and then from October 20, or from October 31st, excuse me, when we receive uh, and close the draft comment period, 
we will be reviewing and, and looking at ways to integrate the comments we receive in that time period. So we, we do invite you to provide comments. They will be looked at and they will be helpful to making the plan as strong as it possibly can be. So for next steps, once you have downloaded the plan and had a chance to look at it, you can comment uh, through several mechanisms. One is through a survey. So we've set up a survey, which is available at the, the link on the screen and also through the website. You can also click on a button just below the plan download button. Uh, and that button is at mapc.ma slash master plan final. And that uh, master plan survey, it looks like what's on the screen now. And it basically goes topic by topic uh, along with the chapters of the master plan and gives you a text entry box. Uh, so that, for example, if you're reviewing the economic development chapter uh, and you have questions or comments about the goals and strategies that are listed in that chapter, you could go to this survey and enter your thoughts in that box and then send along the, submit the survey and then we'll take a look at those comments. Um, you can go through the survey and add comments for as many or as little uh, different chapters as you'd like to. The same survey includes the implementation questions, which we just um, mentioned and went through as in this meeting as well. So if you're watching a recording of this video, you can go to that survey and provide us your input on implementation approaches. Additionally, or in lieu of the survey, you can send comments or questions directly to myself at jfiala at mapc.org or to Rachel Benson, your director of planning and Rentham at rbenson at rentham.gov. And we'd be happy to accept your comments and review them and add them with others that are received. And again, just to make sure everyone has the information, all of this can be found at www.mapc.ma slash Rentham Vision. And everything I just spoke of is there on the website for you to take a look at at your leisure and to download and review. So with that, I'll pause again. We have just a couple more minutes before our conclusion at 8.30. Um, but if there were any other thoughts or questions, we'd be happy to take them uh, in this, these few minutes that we have left before we end the recording. Josh, it looks like we have a question in the comment box. In the... Do you, would you do you have it? Do you mind? Yeah, reading I can, it I'm Andrew? happy to read it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Jeff Plant said, "Is MAPC going to recommend to the town setting up an implementation committee that was referred to earlier?" Yes. I, I, at this point, I think unless I, that will be something that we we will uh, master plan implementation committee or sorry master plan committee members that are in this meeting, uh, we will be meeting again. We. Uh, um, to review comments and have thoughts about implementation as a group, um, unless there's for some reason opposition to it. MAPC has seen that throughout the region work very well and consider at this point a best, a best practice of master plan implementation. So that would be among our recommendations for implementation. Um, yes, so that, that answers your question, Jeff. We, we will be discussing it with the committee though. All right, seeing, seeing no other questions, uh, we wanted to thank you all for joining us this evening and thank you in advance for any comments or feedback you may provide to strengthen the town's master plan. And we really appreciate all of your participation this evening and participation throughout this uh, two year process to great benefit of the town for having all of your input and feedback. So thank you all very much and thank you to our team and to the master plan implementation or master, I did it again, master plan committee members, you're not implementation members yet. Um, so master plan committee members, thank you all for your participation as well. And Rachel, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks all. Have a good evening. Take care.